Hey, in this video I will be creating a photo gallery uh, using HTML5 and CSS floats. I'm going to be using the HTML5 boilerplate, so if you go to initializer.com you'll be on this page here. Uh, I'll take you through the steps into which uh, I got my starter project right over here gallery so we'll get to that in a second uh, we're gonna use placeholder it for our images this is a really great way to uh, prototype a web page using placeholder images uh, much more convenient than having to find images and size them accordingly this this way you can do it on the fly and I'll show you how that works as well I'll be using the Atom text editor this is a free text editor you can use uh, Atom you can use sublime uh, any text editor that you like but I prefer Adam. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is head over to initializer.com and in our scenario, our simple example, we want to use the classic HTML5 boilerplate example. So go ahead and click on that so you'll get these set of options. And the only thing we'll need to do here is that leave this to no template checked uh, modernizer, get rid of minified, get rid of all of these other uh, items. So we don't we won't be needing any of that. So keep in mind before I download so modernizer is a feature detection tool. So essentially what this does is that when you, a page loads, it adds some classes to the um, to the HTML tag that say what the browser is, is capable of, uh, is compatible with. In other words, is the browser uh, familiar with, let's say, is it a touch device? Is it a, can it do things like Flexbox? Uh, so we'll, this is a little bit more advanced, but go ahead and keep it just, uh, just in case as you advance uh, in your um, development. Development, uh, website development, you'll be using Modernizer to see which browsers have support for certain features and which don't. So this way you could have some uh, uh, fallback code in case uh, somebody visits your website on an older browser, you can then put some code in to, to make your website still work for older browsers. So uh, this is uh, just to keep in mind for the future. Uh, we, don't, we won't be needing jQuery uh, for this project, so just very simple. So after you do that, go ahead and scroll down, click download it. After you download it, you'll get the this folder and this is what you'll see inside here is related to git uh, you can go ahead and feel free just to ignore uh, th these items here you can delete them if you like but you can also feel free to ignore them uh, this is just for version controlling the git is used just to version control your files uh, that won't be covered in this video but definitely look for that in my uh, YouTube channel uh, we also have our CSS folder where we have normalize and normalize is a CSS reset so in here it, it contains a collection of CSS CSS uh, styles uh, that will essentially reset all the tags for you. Things like the P tag, the H1, H2, H3 tag, uh, things like that, making your page more consistent uh, with uh, various browsers. So when you're developing your website, perhaps you're using Chrome, for example, uh, you can be rest assured that whatever styles you apply will also look uh, very much the same in Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, um, things like in Safari. Uh, so definitely keep that as well. So we have a minified version here. So we have the full version here and a minified version. So we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, we have our image folder, nothing in here. Our JavaScript folder, we just have our blank main.js. A vendor folder, we just have modernizer in here. And in our index.html file, and that's it. So when you open up index.html, you'll see the following page. Hello world, this is an HTML5 boilerplate, so very basic stuff. So just to review this document here really quick. So we have our HTML5 doc type. We have our HTML tag with the class Node.js, and this is in regards to modernizer. So essentially what modernizer will do when the page loads, it will look for this class, Node.js. It will change this class and add more classes in here based on uh, what the browser is capable. So I'll show you that right now. So if you pull up your page right here, and if you go right click anywhere and head over to view page source you'll see that there's nothing over here so the reason for that is that you need to look at this in the, using the web developer tool so if I click inspect instead of view page source I click inspect you'll see that we have all these classes that were just added in here by modernizer so we have JS meaning that this browser has JavaScript enabled uh, flexbox it supports flexbox supports these other tags as well uh, so this is a, it's a no touch device I'm on right now so if you wanted to target uh, your an element on your website just for no touch devices you could use the class no touch to do that uh, things like that so this is a very handy tool to use this so this is modernizer in action 
cool. Uh, here's our uh, head where all our styles will go, our JavaScript links to our JavaScript files will go, things like that. Uh, modernizer, unlike uh, most JavaScript files, uh, does need to belong in the head. Uh, typically, JavaScript files do actually uh, uh, should be placed at the end of your document. Uh, this way, when the page loads, uh, the JavaScript file won't slow the rendering down. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But modernize just need to be at the top, so this way it can update the uh, HTML uh, tag up here accordingly and make sure that everything is running good when the, when the DOM loads. Uh, and here we have our uh, character set, uh, what kind of uh, characters we're going to be using. So it's UTF-8. You really don't need to have this. I'm going to Gonna go ahead and get rid of that. It just comes with HTML5 boilerplate. You can leave it in, no big deal. Uh, here's your title for our website. So we'll just put, go ahead and put photo gallery in here. Okay. Okay. And here's our meta description for the page. So this is a simple photo gallery page. And this is for our responsive website design. So in this case, in this uh, demo we won't be uh, building a responsive website however you have this tool in place so when you pull up this website on the phone things will be zoomed in in proportion to the device you're on so that's going to keep that as well here's a link to our normalized file so if we look inside our CSS directory you'll see the minified version which is this which is this right here if I click on it you'll see the whole thing's been minified if you go ahead and click on view soft wrap you can see that uh, let's give it a sec here uh, let's try that again. Uh, there it goes. So this is going wrap, and this is essentially a minified version of this as well. And this this contains a bunch of different styles, resetting uh, elements, making sure that you uh, everything looks the same on various browsers. So we can go ahead and keep that link to the minified version, which is a leaner file. You, so you definitely want that. We then have a link to our main.css. So if we go ahead and open that up, you'll see a bunch of stuff that came with HTML5 boilerplate. This is kind of their own little reset, if you will. You can go ahead and leave these intact. You can feel free to ignore. It. Just scroll on down to authors custom styles, and this is where we'll be using putting in our styles in here. Perfect. Uh, here's that link to modernizer, closing the uh, head tag, and here's a body tag, and this is where all our HTML5 tags will go. Uh, we can leave the link to the JavaScript file just in here. It's fine. We won't, we won't be using JavaScript, but you can go ahead and leave that just in case you end up using that in the future. So let's go ahead and create our basic uh, semantic. Uh, HTML. So for, first thing you want to do is use the main tag. So the main tag is going to be uh, all the contents related to this page. It's unique to this page. So remember, if this is a one page uh, website, if you will, there's no other pages in here. So nothing's being repeated throughout. So in other words, you, have, you just have index.html. There is no about HTML. There's no contact HTML. So everything can go inside here. Now, if you had those pages and if you had elements like the header elements, which is something we're going to utilize in a moment, and a menu element, you would not include those inside the main tag. So keep that in mind. So because uh, the header element and the uh, menu, uh, the nav element, if you will, is going to be repeated throughout. So those elements will be outside of the main. So main is just unique to this page. So whatever content you put in here is unique to this index.html page. Okay, let's go ahead and use the header tag. And what I like to do is use a class site header. You might be thinking to yourself, well, we're using the header tag. Shouldn't there only be one header tag? Well, no, there actually can be multiple header tags. So keep that in mind. So that's why I like to put site header. Let's go ahead and put an H1 in tag here. Photo uh, gallery with CSS floats. Now I'm using CSS floats in this example as an introduction. But remember, uh, in fact, what I'll probably do is place this as an h2 tag uh, what I would actually prefer to do is use flexbox for my image uh, photo gallery but in this simple example I'll just go ahead and use CSS floats okay so we have our header tag the next element I want to go ahead and take advantage of is the section tag class photo container so the section tag will contain all the elements related to the photo gallery photo container. Remember these classes, class names are arbitrary. You can name them anything you wish. Notice I'm putting these tags, notes at the end of each tag. So that's really important because you want to make sure as your website gets larger and you get more and more tags in between these tags, you want to be able to track and figure out what is this exactly closing because you might have more than one section inside of this area here, for example. Let's go ahead and use the uh, article tag. Okay. 
And in this article tag, what I'll put in here is just a some placeholder copy in our paragraph tag. So typically, and I'm going to use that soft wrap again. There it goes. Typically, you would have some sort of introductory in terms of describing what this page includes. This is just good practice to do that. This could be inside your article tag, so you'd have a paragraph tag. Now, the way I did this again, just to review, I just typed in the words lorem. And then hit the tab key, and then you get the whole, uh, the rest of the placeholder, Lorem Ipsen placeholder copy. Really handy stuff. Uh, this is uh, comes with Adam. A lot of text editors do this as well. So once we do that, let's go ahead and create another section, and we'll call this one Photo Gallery. And this is where our actual fo photo gallery will be. And notice I'm just doing the HTML right now. I'm not even worried about the CSS. That I typically save towards the end. So in this photo gallery, we just have images. So I'll just go ahead and put div class image. Okay. And I notice oftentimes when people are learning HTML that tend to conserve their tags, I, um, I advise that you don't conserve tags. They don't take that much space and they make things, things a lot easier to style after the fact. So definitely don't conserve tags. So what I mean by that is, let's go ahead and put an image uh, source in here. HTTP place hold dot it forward slash 300 by 300 and so what I'm doing here is using a placeholder using this website called placeholder and here's some examples on how to use that so here's a URL to the image here's an example of its usage and here they wrapped it in an anchor link so in our case we just need the image portion here and so all you need to do is put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash placehold dot IT and then the size of the image you want. So in this case, they have 350 by 150. In my case, I'm doing 300 by 300. So you might like going back to the uh, conserving tag uh, 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 portion here. So you could technically do this and save some some tags, for example. But this makes it a lot di more difficult to style your elements, things like padding, things like borders. So it's better to have this uh, in your sort of uh, wrapper, if you will, under, with each image, making it a little bit easier to style things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so this should be six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Go ahead and save that. Very good. And at the bottom of after this section here, I'm going to go ahead and put the footer tag. And again, I'm going to use the class of site footer. Okay. And in here, you typically would put something like your copyright information for for example uh, you can also put uh, an aside tag inside right after the article tag I'm going to put the aside tag class site sidebar okay very good now just because it's called a sidebar it doesn't need doesn't mean that it should be uh, in the side of the of your elements it could be at the bottom all this means is that whatever content you put in here the information in here is tangential to this copy here so it relates directly to the copy that it's next to uh, what I'll probably end up actually doing is I'm gonna move this uh, actually we'll leave it like that and in here I'm gonna just create an unordered list and because remember this aside is inside our section articles inside our section so it's all kind of you know related to one another list item so i'm going to put in here uh just maybe links to placeholder let's go ahead and do that in here okay very good this is just showing that we used placeholder make sure we close everything Okay, and let's use another list item here, link to, we'll do this to our initializer. Oops, paste that in here. Very good. Okay, HTML5, boilerplate, very good. Okay, uh, that should do it for us right now. So, um, let's put that, close this up. Now, uh, you may also want to put a target equals underscore blank this is an attribute we're going to be using all this means is that when somebody clicks on that link it's going to open the page in a new tab or window uh, usually it's in a new tab uh, and that's it so just to recap we have our header here at the top inside our main tag here's our header it contains the title and a subheading we have our section we called it photo container with an article describing what this is about inside the article tag we have another section 
uh, includes our photo gallery. And next, after this closing section here, we have in this closing article tag, we have our aside, which is tangential information. Uh, in, in our case, it's just the links to um, items that we use on this page. And um, and we have our footer as well. Now you can put the side element inside the article tag just to make it even more semantic. This way this relates directly to this information here. So that's fine too. Very good. Save that. Okay. So if we look at this page now, here's our current layout. Uh, Google Chrome is asking to translate this placeholder copy. No worries there. So if you scroll down, here's our simple layout. Here's our sidebar here. Here's our copyright in there. Uh, we're good to go. Okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, format this so that this gallery, we, we're going to utilize CSS floats. So they all kind of, there'll be three columns and two rows of images. And I also want to go and center this uh, in the middle here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now we can jump into our CSS. So remember, just do the HTML portion first and then jump into your CSS. So the first element I want to go ahead and target is this main. Go back over here, target the main tag. Go ahead and give it a max width, and I'll tell you why I use max width in just a second. And we're going to use our technique margin uh, equals zero auto. And what is what margin zero auto does? It centers the content. So if I refresh this page now, you see everything's centered. Okay, never tra never translate this. There we go. So now it's all centered. Now the reason why I use max width here is that when I reduce the window size here, you'll see that the window size reduces accordingly, and you don't see any um, uh, any scroll bar here, no no horizontal scroll bar here at the bottom. So for example, if I were to re remove this max po max portion from the width. Now if I refresh this now, you'll see that we have a horizontal scroll here. So we don't want that because we want our website to be as mobile friendly as possible by default. So again, let's put that back in. And so this is basically saying that this document should be the max width should be 760 pixels, but it could be less. Okay, very good. Going back over here, uh, here's our H1 tag, here's our H2 tag, here's our copy. I want to focus on this gallery right now. So here's our photo container. So let's go ahead and target that class in here. Photo container. I'm going to give it a border just so we can see the outline. Okay, black. Let's give it a padding as well. I'm going to use pixels in this example just to keep things simple. Okay, refresh it. So here's our uh, um, uh, photo container inside a border. Very good. And if we go ahead and target the photo gallery now, so that we can um, so we can float these images, I'll show you what how that would look. So first things first, photo gallery. And we're looking for inside photo. We're looking for the image class. Okay. So what we're doing here is target the photo gallery and then target the image uh, class inside the photo gallery class and just go ahead and put float, oops, move the cursor here, float left. Watch what happens if I refresh this page. Okay, so all of a sudden you see something is not quite right. So what's happening here is that this div container is now collapsing. This is a, a result of CSS floats. So this is very common, um, sort of a, a, an issue with CSS floats. And nothing is actually wrong with the way CSS floats works. This is just the way, the, the, how CSS float works. So there's a couple ways to fix this so that we don't have this collapsed container occur. So one thing we can do is we can target this photo gallery here. And you could do overflow hidden. So what this does, if I refresh this page, now we're back in business. However, what ends up happening is if we were to target any of these pictures and try to shift it outside of this container, it'll disappear. Okay, so overflow hidden, it does work, but there are some issues with it if you want to do some fancy styling, for example, where you have this image overlapping this container, for example. So this is not the best solution for that. So go ahead and erase that. So what's great about HTML5 boilerplate in the main.css that it came with, if you scroll down, you'll see a little item called clear fix. It's a class that they created for us, meaning that we can go ahead and go back into here, target this photo gallery, include a second class in here, hit just a space, type in clear fix class because we have it defined right over here. 
Okay, save that, go back in here, refresh the page, we have the same exact layout, but we're not using overflow hidden anymore. So we don't have any limitations with the layout. We could do uh, have the image jut out of the container and have no issues there. So very handy. Clearfix saves the day for us here. Very good. So once we've done that, we've, we've floated this to the left, and you can see here we have one, two, but we really want three columns, not two columns. So what we wanna do now is go ahead and uh, size each of these images in here. So for in order to get three, we'll do width 33.33%, save that, go ahead and refresh. Okay, so here's our three columns. Now you see here that the images are jetting out of this container. This is actually a good example, so let me show you. So if we did not have Clearfix, just to kind of recap on how Overflow works, save, refresh that. Uh, okay, we have that here. Uh, what am I looking for, what am I missing here? Oh yeah, Overflow Hidden. So if we have that in place, refresh this page, you'll see that the image gets cut off over here. So that's why it's not such a good idea to use Overflow Hidden. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this again. Save that, go back into here, put the clear fix uh, back on the photo gallery. Very good. Okay, so now it juts out, which is working just right, but the images are too large. They don't fit in the space. So one way to fix this is we can target all the images. So at the very top inside my author custom styles section here, I want to target all the image globally. So the asterisk, what this means is that it targets all the image images on the document globally. So image tag, and what you want to do is max with 100% height equals auto. And so what this does is it sets the image to 100% of its width, but it won't go any larger than that, but it will reduce in size. So here's what ends up happening. There it goes. So very good. So everything fits into place nicely. The images have been reduced in size to fit in the space. What I want to do now is include padding for, uh, for each of these images. Going back to our image tag over here, padding, five pixels, save and here's some padding so you'll notice how we lost uh sectioning here uh rather the the, the size no longer worked for us now this is related to our padding that we've set up right over here. So that actually increases the width. So what I want to do is instead use something called box sizing. And so what box sizing will do for us, it'll make things a lot easier for us to style our elements, not having to worry about uh, things like uh, padding, uh, throwing things off for us. Because what padding actually did, because we had this size as th at 33.33%, but what padding five pixels did, it actually made the spacing large in here so it can't fit everything in place. So here at the top, after this image declaration here, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. Remember I got this from this article here, inheriting uh, box sizing. So this is the snippet that you can can grab and include in your code. So once you include that in your code, refresh the page and we're back in business again. So you have the padding nicely put in place. Everything fits just right. Excellent. So one final thing that I, I want to do to this page is size these images to fit in this space accordingly. When I, I pick 300 by 300 arbitrarily, but that's not really the way to go. You want to make sure to, to put the images in here that fit this space just right. So, so if we go ahead and mouse over one of these images, right click, inspect, look over the inspector, and if you put your mouse over the image source, you'll see natural is 300 by 300, but it's actually being reduced to 232 by 232. That's what we want. We want that image size to be 232 by 232. Very important. So go ahead and close that. Come back into our index.html. I'm going to go ahead and copy this entire thing. I'm going to do a find. We're going to do a find and replace. And I believe it was 232 by 232. Go ahead and replace all. Save that. Refresh the page. Excellent. These images have been uh, replaced with a 232 by 232 image size. Use the inspector, mouse over that image size. You see that there's no more natural, there's no more resize version. There's just 232 by 232, which is exactly what we want. So this is a basic example of a full gallery page using CSS floats.